What's going on everybody? It's Game Unboxing Reviews here and welcome back to another LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 news update. Now today's news update is a massive one. Like this is huge news. I've got news on the opening level, the open world and even some news on what some of the characters in the game can do as well. So without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, so first up, let's kick things off with a little update on the game's storyline. So the game's story will be co-written by comic book veteran Kurt Busiek and will feature appearances from more than 30 Marvel characters. Now that's very exciting, but one of the things I like about what Arthur Parsons has been saying recently is, yes, you know, you'll see the Guardians and Spider-Man and Captain America and stuff like that, what you would expect, but with this game, they're really pushing those alternate versions of characters. So instead of just seeing any old Spider-Man, we're going to be introduced to Miguel O'Hara when we visit 2099 in the story, which is really exciting. I love the idea of them giving us all these different alternate versions of characters from different dimensions and timelines and planets and things like this, and it'd be great if they do the same for the villains. You know, a lot of people really want to see Venom 2099 in the game. Myself, personally, I would love to see him as well. And there's tons of other characters from Noir and 2099 and 1602. There's tons and tons of different versions of characters that would just be amazing to see in this game, both heroes and and villains. Now next up, let's talk about the game's opening level. Now I have tons of details on this and I think you're all gonna love it. So the game opens with a scene where the Milano is flying through the skies and if you think that's cool, Redbone's Come and Get Your Love from Awesome Mix Volume 1 is actually playing in the background. That is awesome. Right away, you know that's Guardians of the Galaxy. You see the Milano, you got the Awesome Mix playing. Really, really great introduction to the game. Now in the first level, the Guardians of the Galaxy are attempting to make a crash landing on Xandar, but as they speed towards the planet's surface, different elements of scattered worlds from time and space appear to be popping in, and it's just causing chaos. One minute you see 2099, then Sakaar, then Wakanda, just crazy, crazy amounts of dimensions and planets popping up all over the place. Now the playable demo that was shown was basically focusing on the Guardians of the Galaxy, so we didn't really hear of anything more on other characters, they mainly just wanted to say, yes the Guardians are playable and here's what they can do, so that's fine. I'm excited to play as the Guardians of the Galaxy, especially the movie versions because they're personally my favourite, so I really can't wait to play as them. So I'm glad they showed a lot of the Guardians of the Galaxy at these events. Now apparently right from the start you get to freely walk around Peter Quill's ship, which is of course the Milano, and the reason they've done that is just so people can get to grips with the controls so I think you can smash objects and stuff like that personally while that is great to be able to walk around the Milano in that level I really want them to be able to let us do that in Chronopolis as well so it'd be really cool if we could actually freely explore the Milano in free roam that would be amazing now then, after landing on Xandar, the Guardians take on a massive Celestial, but they also see Kang the Conqueror taunting them from his Democles base. That is, of course, his base from the comic book, so that's really nice to see that in the game. Now, the Guardians are then quickly surrounded by Roman sentries, Egyptian guards, 1930s mobsters, and many other enemies brought in from time and space by Kang. So, yeah, the first level, right from the start, this game is absolutely insane. And in the Celestial fight, it basically involves Star-Lord deploying a gravity bomb, Gamora stabbing the Celestial's arm, and then Drax cutting into the Celestial soldier. So it's just an insane introduction to the game. Already, it's just all-out mayhem, which I love. And the best part of all of this, the mission ends with the Guardians being greeted by Nick Fury on Earth. And if that sounds familiar, it is, because this is actually a callback to the ending of the first game, and it's just such an awesome, nice little Easter egg for fans of the original. Love that they did that. Really connect. Lego Marvel Super Heroes 1 with Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 in a really nice way. Next up, let's talk about character abilities. Now, Star-Lord can throw grenades, fly, and even dance and listen along to come and get your love, which apparently also causes anyone nearby to stop fighting and start dancing. Love that, absolutely love that, because, you know, with Star-Lord, I had a rough idea how he would work in a Lego game, and they've given you everything. He can throw grenades, he can fly, he can shoot, and he can dance along with his mixtape. It's absolutely perfect. They couldn't make the character any better but of course I'm sure he's even better than what they've said there he probably has even more abilities that we don't know about yet 
Now we also have details on Groot and the spiders in the game, but first up let's talk about the spiders. So with Spider-Man 2099, apparently he can use his web wings in the game, which is fantastic news. Now the question is, why and how? How does he use them? Why does he use them? It's obviously going to be a purpose. If it's just for gliding around the city, that's totally fine by me, because that already sounds amazing. And hopefully, like I've been saying in other videos, if Spider-Man from Spider-Man Homecoming is in the game, hopefully he too can use his web wings, because that would be incredible. Now, as well as Spider-Man 2099, of course, we have Spider-Gwen. Now, in the comic book, Spider-Gwen, you can see Gwen in some comic art and things that she's actually using a drum kit, and it says Mary Jane on it. I think it's the Mary Jane or something like that. Now, she can actually use that in the game. I have no idea why she uses it. Maybe it's for attacks, maybe it's a special move. No clue. But the fact is, it's in the game, and that's really cool because it shows that TT Games have been doing their research and are picking out cool little things like that for fans of that character. And I think Spider-Gwen has brought a lot of hype for this game, so hopefully fans of that character are going to be happy to hear that. Now, that's not all Spider-Gwen can do. She can also take selfies in the middle of battle. Again, no idea why she could do that, but it's an ability, so that's pretty cool. Finally, for the spiders, we have Spider-Man Noir. Now, I couldn't find much details on this version of Spidey, but apparently in-game, he can use a unique wall-crawling style. So, what I think they might be referring to there is maybe when he crawls on walls it looks a little more stealthy so maybe he has stealth abilities in the game that would be amazing if they could do that with the mission impossible level in lego dimensions it wasn't you know full-on stealth but it was as close as we've ever got to a stealth game you know a stealth lego game so i'd love to see them push that even more with a character like spider-man noir but if not i'm just so glad he's in the game because i love spider-man noir now, lastly, for the character abilities, we have Groot. Now, certain characters like Rocket and Groot can perform team-up attacks. So, if you're wanting to see, you know, Rocket on Groot's shoulders and things like that, you're absolutely going to see it in this game. And in the trailer, we saw a lot of baby Groot on Rocket's shoulder. So, hopefully, we can do that as well. Now, as for Groot's actual abilities, this time around, they're doing some really, really cool stuff. So, in the game, Groot has his own time tech. And this allows him to basically transform from Guardians Volume 1 big Groot to the baby Groot from volume 2 at any time. Very, very exciting. I love that because that's exactly what I wanted from the character. Being able to play as both versions just by holding down a button is awesome. So kudos to TT Games for doing that because that is really, really cool. Now the reason for this is obviously because big Groot will be used for certain puzzles and baby Groot will be used for other puzzles as well. So they're both useful in different ways. Very, very cool. And last but most certainly not least, the final thing that we need to talk about is of course the open world of Chronopolis. So this week, TT Games have been saying that they want this game to feature their biggest open world to date. And honestly, with 20 different open world locations all in one place, that place of course being Chronopolis, I really think they're going to accomplish exactly that. Now, last week we found out the Chronopolis features Ancient Egypt, the Old West, Saqqar, and New York City in the year 2099 as areas that you can freely explore. Now, those locations alone were enough to get us all extremely hyped up about the Chronopolis hub world. This week, however, we now know even more. So some of the other areas we'll be able to freely explore in the Chronopolis hub world are Hala, which is the home world of the Kree and capital of the Kree Empire, Atalan, yes, you heard me right, Atalan, palace of the royal Inhumans family that is in the Chronopolis hub world. I'm, I'm blown away that they've added that to the game because that's just going to be amazing. And of course, some of you might be thinking right now, does this confirm the Inhumans? Well, if we think about it like this, Lego Marvel Super Heroes 1 had Black Bolt, Lego Marvel's Avengers had Crystal. This year, we're getting the Inhumans TV series. And with them putting Atalan in this game, I'm pretty certain they're pushing the Inhumans in this game. So hopefully, this means that they'll all be playable because that would be awesome being able to run around Atalan as Black Bolt would be so cool and he was so much fun to play as in the first game so I can't wait to see what they do with them this time around now, some of the other locations that you can freely explore in Chronopolis are Medieval England. I guess you could pretty much call that the Marvel 1602 side of Chronopolis. So maybe we'll see Spider-Man 1602 in the game. That would be pretty cool. And of course, other Marvel 1602 characters as well. Personally, I would love to see Spider-Man 1602 in the game. Imagine swinging around Medieval England as that version of Spidey. That would be so cool. I really hope they do that. Because like I've been saying several times now, the more Spidey content in this 
this game, the merrier. We're also going to be able to freely explore Wakanda, which is of course the kingdom of the Black Panther, and some articles have even suggested that Manhattan is part of the Chronopolis hub world. Now, I don't want you guys to get too excited about that because I don't know what that means. When you add Manhattan to a list of locations in a game like this where it's to do a time travel and different dimensions and things, it could mean anything. It could mean Manhattan from, I don't know, like 2099 or something like that. We already know that 2099 New York City is in the game, so that might just be a repeat of something else so we'll have to wait and see but it would be really really cool if we've got chronopolis and we've got all these worlds mixed together but then they also add the classic manhattan hub as well like i said we'll have to wait and see but so far chronopolis sounds incredible and i can't wait to see more of it Alright guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comment section below why you're excited for LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. Obviously, I've already said it's Chronopolis. The open world sounds absolutely incredible. It sounds like the best thing they've ever made to do with an open world in a LEGO game. And I just can't wait to see more. Alright guys, so I want to thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for lots of more videos real soon. And as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe.